just recently, uh, the study conducted by Purdue University uh, surveyed over 300 locations in 12 state areas. And these locations included many things uh, from farmers' fields to research trials, uh, anything conducted in any of the states in any of the farm ground regions. From this trial, they were able to come to a number of conclusions uh, that have been kind of elusive research uh, trial leaders in the past. Uh, some of the conclusions they reached were that on average, uh, farm fungicides applied at D5 to 6 tended to increase corn yields by 3 to 5 bushels per acre. Fungicide applications applied to DT corn tended to increase yield by roughly 3 to 8 bushels per acre. And then Fungicides applied at D5 to 6 followed by a farm fungicide application at DT also tended to increase yields by about 3 to 8 bushels per acre. And so essentially, what they were saying there is that uh, whether you apply once at DT or uh, once at 5 to 6 followed by a DT, uh, the results were roughly the same. And this is important because. When you're applying a fungicide, uh, you are also not only applying it to improve plant health, the fungicide also does what it's supposed to do and control diseases. And we need to keep in mind that when we're controlling pests, we also have to remember that uh, resistance development can occur in the, in the pests that we're trying to control. And so when we use more of the fungicide than we need to, uh, we oftentimes wind up molding a scenario in which resistance can develop in that plant. And so uh, when we look at applications made at DT alone uh, versus two applications at D5 and DT, uh, finding no difference is important and it saves people money uh, by just making a single application and it also uh, is a better overall, uh, more sustainable oftentimes ranged from three to five bushels per acre, again, across uh, all the fungicides that are available for uh, these applications of corn. Uh, that when, when planning for fungicide applications, that three to five bushel per acre is kind of the sweet spot that you should look for uh, for cost management for the application of the fungicides. Here in Carrington, uh, we've also done largely fall in line with this very large survey we had by Purdue. Uh, our findings include that if we're going to see a yield bump in corn, uh, DT applications have often been uh, more consistently higher. Now, we, we have seen a yield bump occasionally with applications made at D5 to 6, but again, for consistency, more often see our yield bump occur at DT. And when I say with these yield bumps, that is also statistical. Uh, a lot of the time we see very small increases in yield uh, from uh, fungicide applications, uh, but they are small enough where uh, they don't, they aren't statistically different from one another. Uh, but occasionally we do find a few trees uh, that have uh, increased yield. Here in 2013, uh, we are actually conducting a very large scale farm fungicide trial in which we are screening 28 different combinations of fungicides, uh, fungicide timings, uh, products, uh, and sequential treatments in hopes to uh, really create a large scale data in which we can uh, go through all the possible combinations that a person may be interested in. Uh, the results from this trial uh, will be posted November of 2013 on our website uh, for those who may be interested in following up uh, on the results of our, of our farm fungicide work. Uh, another quick note on uh, when we're talking about uh, corn and soybean rotation in the state, uh, many areas of the state are pro 
approaching uh, 40% soybean acreages and 30 to 40% corn acreages, especially with going to east and south of that area in Dakota. And along with that, we do come to other systems that are almost exclusively rye ready. And as most people will have realized over the last few years, the grain screen system culture has become a serious threat uh, to that community on the prairie system. Uh, as such, Soybeans, there are no herbicides that are uh, not NLS that have a residual uh, that are transit free. There is not an herbicide that has those three things which are all good for culture management. So the key to soybeans is to get the weeds as small as you can. And when the culture starts coming up, you need to hit it immediately. Because the time between noticing the problem time when uh, implementation of the treatment occurs uh, may be too late, especially as the days start to heat up in the middle of the summer. That kosher can go very quickly. And uh, even better than hitting the weeds when they're small is hitting them before they even emerge. In soybeans, there are 